compound A and B are functional isomers, like we are told in 3.1.1. What we are actually required to do is define the term functional isomer. Like all isomers, we have the same molecular formula, but in this case, the compounds differ by functional group. So the definition for functional isomer, same molecular formula, but different functional groups. Let's look at 3.1.2. Write down the IUPIC name of compound B. So the first thing you want to do is to determine which homologous series this compound B belongs to. Because of the structure of the functional group, compound B it's a key trone. This carbon that is bonded to the oxygen is bonded to two other carbons. And because of that, we can conclude in saying that compound B is a key trone. Now what we need is the longest carbon chain. Clearly, it is easy to see that this will be our longest carbon chain with one, two, three, four, five, with five carbons. So we know we have pen 10. We have pentane. Now what we need or what we're looking for is the position of the carbon that is bonded to the oxygen. If we start numbering from the left, we're going to have one, two, three. If we start numbering from the right, we're going to have one, two, three. So where we start numbering really doesn't matter. Our functional group is on the third carbon. So we're going to have pentane three own. That is the answer to 3.1.2. You. Let's look at 3.1.3. How does the boiling point of A compare to that of pen 10 1 all? So we have pen 10 1 all and compound A. Write down only greater than, equal to, or lower than. So let's go to compound A. Compound A is an aldehyde because the carbon that is bonded to the oxygen is only bonded to one other carbon. So that makes it an aldehyde. So we have pentane one all and pentanol. Pentane one all is an alcohol. So it consists of hydrogen bonding. We have hydrogen bonding in alcohols. And then pentanol is an aldehyde. It consists of dipole dipole. So the intermolecular forces in pentanol is dipole dipole. So in order to answer this question, you actually need to know which intermolecular force is generally stronger between hydrogen bonding and dipole dipole. Compound A will have a lower than will have a lower than boiling point compared to pentane one all. Let me explain why that is the case in 3.1.4. The intermolecular forces in pentane one all, which happens to be hydrogen bonding, are stronger than the intermolecular forces in pentanol which is dipole dipole and then you know that if you have stronger intermolecular forces then more energy is required to overcome those intermolecular forces in that compound and then as a consequence the alcohol or paint one all will have a higher boiling point that is the answer to 3.1.4 let's look at 3.1.5 how will the vapor pressure of compound b compared to that of pentane one all that only higher than lower than or equal to explain the answer fully so compound b like we've already deduced is a ketone and which intermolecular forces do we find in ketones we have dipole uh, dipole forces and then again in pentane one all we have hydrogen bonding in pentane one all we have hydrogen bonding so that will lead to ketone having a higher than vapor pressure compared to pentane one all higher than vapor pressure so what you have to understand is that the weaker the intermolecular forces then the higher the vapor pressure so between compound b our ketone and pentan one all pentan one all has stronger intermolecular forces so it will require more energy to overcome the intermolecular forces and then as a consequence it is going to have a lower vapor pressure it, it is going to have a lower vapor pressure compared to ketone ketone will actually have a higher vapor pressure so what you need to memorize or what you need to know is that the stronger the intermolecular forces the higher the boiling point the higher the melting point but the lower the vapor pressure you need to know that 3.2 
3.2.1 let's define the term boiling point uh, that is not the temperature at which liquid turns to gas please we no longer use that even in at this level it is actually the temperature at which the vapor pressure equals the atmospheric pressure the temperature at which the vapor pressure equals the atmospheric pressure that is boiling point 3.2.2 run on the independent variable for this investigation let's take a look at what is happening in this question let us use compound c to e to investigate one factor which influences the boiling points of organic compounds what i'm realizing real quick is that in compound c we have one two three four we have four carbons, right? And then in compound D, we have one, two, three, four, five. We have five carbons in compound D. And then in compound E, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. We have six carbons in compound E. So it seems like our independent variable here, what we are changing is actually the chain length. We can see that from the number of carbons we have in the compounds. So the answer to 3.2.2 would be chain length chain length chain length or the molecular mass because as the chain length increases then the molecular mass is also going to increase so that is the independent variable and 3.2.3 run on the type of van der waals force that occurs between these organic compounds so these organic compounds are all alkenes right well you can draw compound c fairly quick by saying c one two three hydrogens and then another carbon with two hydrogens another carbon with two hydrogens and the last carbon with three hydrogens the same thing with compound d and e they're all alkenes so the force that is occurring in compound c d and e is actually london force that is london force or induced dipole forces well let's look at 3.2.4 right down the conclusion that can be drawn about the boiling point of straight chain alkenes so let's look at our diagram we can see fully well that as the number of carbon is increasing our boiling point is increasing from minus 1 to 36.1 and lastly to 69 so we can conclude and say that as the chain length increases the boiling point increases if you had said molecular mass in 3.2.2 you would say that as the molecular mass increases the boiling point increases 